So the reason why they call this the human factors lab is just because we're working through these workflow things with yeah, the system. Yeah, exactly. The, each pop-up has to earn its way onto the flight deck. We've done a lot of different evaluations. We put pilots in here. Ask, we ask them questions. Find this button, touch that thing. Yeah, how long does it take? I've just made a human factors mistake by being kind of quick, hasty. And we're not just running scenarios in sims. Kind of curious to see it if I made a bad decision, what it would do. Yeah. Do it. Let's try 2,000 feet a minute. Learning how technology can save us from ourselves. 69, 68. It's going to save us, right? Oh, look at it do it. The Flight Shops channel has afforded my team and I some pretty amazing experiences to share with the aviation community. This is the second about our unprecedented access to the Garmin factory and the Human Factors Lab. Yesterday we got to see some absolutely, at least for me, they were insane things through the design, development, and really focusing on the testing process of what they do here. And I've never, I've never seen anything like it. In the previous episode from this content, Dave and I had our minds collectively blown as we got to see the engineering and testing facilities here. TMAX, a lot of the team that's working on experimental products specifically as well as some of our uh, certified products are extremely passionate about what they do. They are pilots, uh, home builders. Uh, I'm a home builder myself, uh, so we just geek out on this stuff all day long. We love it. And it's hard to know where work stops and the fun begins because it's just kind of all crammed in there, which is awesome. What you're looking at here is our cockpit for the Bell 525. It's a brand new large helicopter they're just certifying. You are, you're hovering, you're right now, you're eight feet off the ground, you're holding it pretty stable. Most guys can't do this right off the bat. This helicopter would actually have a stability augmentation system that would make this a lot simpler to fly, and that's all off in this simulation, basically. You're, oh, like, you're, you're, I want it to be off. You're, you're flying it, right? Make it hard. That's what he wants to do. You're, you're flying it. This lab is full of some pretty awesome toys. As we develop software, we put the latest and greatest builds on this. Latest and greatest often means buggy, so we need to work through all the, the issues that we've developed. So I'm going way too fast right now. Uh, well, faster is better. Is it though? Right, there's, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing you can hurt here. It's, it's a simulator. We also bring in external pilots, um, other OEMs, um, some of our, our pilots from around Garmin, just that are, are other private pilots, to come in and interact with our systems, interact with what we've designed to make sure it's actually intuitive. Um, it works for the pilot as he, as he blacks out on the display. We can simulate a lot of different aircraft. This isn't typically what we do for, for testing purposes. You know, this is more, more just for some fun. We'll, we'll show you some more serious stuff in the room next door. We spent most of our time in what I'm calling the big sim. The Citation Longitude with Garmin G5000 integrated flight deck. Okay, airspeed's alive. Cross check. The guys thought it would be fun to set us up launching from my home base, where I started my YouTube channel flying with Spectrum Airways way back in 2013. You're proud, son. Right. They had us flying to my current home away from home, which is Windsor, Ontario, where Dave helped sign me off to fly the T-6 Harvard with the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association. Me too. This is the panel we're here to learn about, which we're planning to put in the Vans Aircraft RV-14 that we're building there. And we've got an ongoing vlog series following that project. TMAX has taken a ton of the technology we've learned in higher business jet applications, taken that technology into the coding and the hardware. Right, well, I mean, you got the autopilot, the same technology talking to G3X that's talking to G5000, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the G700 autopilot uh, was born in the, in the jet world and bigger planes. Dave went for a demo flight to test out some of the tech while I was getting a bunch of filming done. Kind of curious to see it if I made a bad decision, what it would do. Yeah. Do it. Let's try 2,000 feet a minute. Now, that's obviously not sustainable for this airplane, especially now with the power rolled back. So I have two different places that I can actually control the autopilot on the G3X system. One being the screen. You can hear my servos click behind the scenes there. Um, also, our electronic stability protection. This is a place I can turn that on and off, depending if you want to go fly aerobatics. We're actually installing a covered rocker switch for that, which will explain, along with why we've chosen this particular layout for our center stack, in a future build vlog. But the autopilot controller, especially if you're an IFR pilot, I really like people to have the mode controller here. 8,500, 2,000 feet a minute, 90 knots, 80 knots, got lots of rudder in it now. 
73, 69, 68. It's gonna save us, right? Oh, look at it do it. Perfect, really at a late time too. Uh, you're not down to the stall speed of the, so it so is. So it's holding 60 knots trying to do this. That's amazing. There's minimum speed, dropping the nose. It's just going to hold 60. It's going to protect your speed so you don't stall the airplane with a whole bunch of power on it or anything like that. It's going to pitch the nose over, and it's going to keep telling you, you know, min speed, beep, beep, beep. You know, you have all kinds of indications that. Yeah, there's a lot of things wrong something. with this scenario. This would be really easy to do slow fight on a flight test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have that engaged, it's the autopilot's not going to let the aircraft stall, whether it's being driven by the autopilot, or maybe you have that ESP, the electronic stability protection engaged, it's not going to let you stall the airplane. It's going to give you that nice little nudge, so it's going to give you envelope protection like a Learjet. So just go ahead and roll it into a bank to 45. exceed 45. Yeah, so. So keep coming, keep coming. Now you'll see there he's, uh, he's lying. He should have felt a little bit of a force there. It's trying fighting to me now. Yeah. So you can still fly it into the 60 degree range, but you have to want to. Yeah. I'm... Autopilot. Oh, it, after, after, after a few seconds, it said, I'm done with you. And it... After 50% of the last 20 seconds, or 10 continuous seconds, of course. It's going to take it, it. It puts it into level mode. Having recently earned my instrument rating, I had a good time being the pilot monitoring in this scenario. All right, go ahead and hit enter there. Perfect, and you can load that. Don't activate. This is a human factors bug that we are not real. That is a human factors It always happens. Load and activate is a, is a booger, right? It's, yeah. it's a very useful tool when you need it, but when you don't, it, yeah, it right. can cause you some workload, right? But that said, if you if you load an approach and never activate it, doesn't that also screw you because it won't do the vertical profile? You need to, you need to activate. You need just, some dialogue just... in between that's like, you've got legs in between here and there, are you sure? Are you, you sure? Can... See, that's the kind of the conversations we, we like to have, exactly. Yeah. Like, does this, does this need another pop-up to tell you? Talk. We yeah. don't like pop-ups. Pop-ups right. are annoying, you just usually cancel them out. Right. So the, each pop-up has to earn its way under the flight deck. And so that's why this is called the Human Factors Lab. Yeah. It, it's not as much about training no. I've just made a human factors mistake by being kind of quick, hasty. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course I want to activate it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Okay, so now it took back over. Yeah, so localizer's now. Heading turned off. Because right, because the localizer took over. There's a lot of automation in these, in these flight decks that do help. It was interesting to learn that this very sim was where a lot of the development work was done for Garmin Emergency Autoland. I guess one of the main, uh, last main features we did in here, you guys have probably already seen the Emergency Autoland, we had a lot of people come in here that were non-pilots and we didn't tell them anything. All right, let's go fly. And we had the, the pilot kind of expire and we just wanted to watch. The system automatically activates if it senses the pilot isn't responsive or it can be manually activated by passengers. We want to observe and take notes. Major changes came from that, those evaluations of what people, what, what do non-pilots want to see? Right? That, that was a big question because we know what pilots want to see. We're all pilots. Everybody in this human factors division is pilots. Right. But what do non-pilots want to see when, when, when things go bad? Right. Uh, okay, so that's when you came up with the thing of like a big screen that yeah. says, don't worry about it, make sure yeah. your seatbelt's on. We had a lot of text. We had EIS, and they're like, I don't care about any of that. Just tell me it's going to be okay. Right. Reassure me that I don't yeah. have to do anything. And, and the ATC option of like, if you want to, press the button. Yeah, we turn these entire touch controllers into one big button. Oh, yeah. uh, that you can just press a big button in the middle, talk to ATC, like a walkie-talkie, right? We use that verbiage because people will know that like you got to press and hold on a walkie-talkie, right. which is something we are all totally used to, but a new person doesn't really, they tap it, tap it, right. and we watch that happen, you know, but they, people catch on pretty quick. We'll get back to the big sim for a fairly eventful approach. Meantime, this is like some sci-fi stuff. So if you want to step under here, put your eyes about here. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. This is the GHD 2100 projection HUD. So up at the top, you'll see a projector over your head and then the combiner in front of you. Right. Basic premise is, is what you're seeing in the display there is that we are able to overlay all the PFW symbology, airspeed, altitude, attitude, but we also can overlay with synthetic vision. So you're seeing the synthetic vision in that imagery right there. It's just a series of prisms and mirrors and lenses. It hits that combiner. It makes it what's called collimated, focused at infinity. So you aren't refocusing your eyes from a near to a far to a near to a far. Yeah, it's amazing how it just kind of turns on when you get lined up properly. You can imagine why that's the case. If you go too far out, now you're looking at a, a picture at an angle right. rather than the one that you need to be looking at.
really it's it's to keep your head focused out looking forward you're not bending down looking up if you've ever flown with IFR and you put your head down and then you lift up suddenly you feel disoriented and you think you're turning and you're really not it's the the tolerance of this so in a car you're looking 12 13 14 20 feet in front right. here you're looking on the order of miles 15 miles you might be on a 10 mile final or something and trying to pick out the runway out there if you're off just a fraction of degree Runway is way off that direction. We put that technology in something that you can wear on your eyes. That's, I think, where you're going to see it be cost effective and able to do it in, in all other aircraft. But that technology, it's still coming. Yeah. Let's get back on board with Dave hand flying the ILS. Now, he's a highly qualified Warbird pilot, but he doesn't exactly have much time in a citation. So go easy on him in the comments. Do you know what you're looking at for the glide slope? Yep, yep got it. Yeah. The flight path director, direct the flight path marker, that green circle, directly on the runway. Hey, well, we just had a full scale flexion, so okay, you're getting it back. Yeah, I got it. Well, we're okay. Yeah, that's a go around if it's real, but you want to try to dive down and get it? I'll get it. Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, glide slope's coming back. We I'm have the glide. Oh, I 200 see. to go for minimum. You put that guy right on that runway, you'll never have a deviation bar error. 100 to go for minimums. This is gonna look sketchy. Yeah, this is gonna be a, a go around. We are at minimums, so let's go around. Let's get a little fast. So. Wow. The go? It's at your thumb. There you go. Okay, so weather just is at minimums. Yeah, we're going yeah. around. We're not getting into day, boys. No, I guess, I, guess we, I guess we probably should have checked the weather, huh? <laughs> we didn't even look at the weather. Actually, I go to the flight plan. No, you we didn't, the, didn't look at it. You go to the destination, you hit the info button. Look how beautiful it is. What's going on? Let's, uh, let's sucker one, one a sucker hole and land on one. Uh, yeah, I'm just going full VFR now. Let's go 07. Dave's going rogue. Yeah. Thanks to sponsors and Patreon supporters for helping create this content. A lot of work went into this one. Okay, so confirmed, gear is down, laps are set. I'll be leveraging footage that I wasn't able to fit into these two episodes in future build vlogs. Yeah, that was... That is crazy. Like, not real at all. <laughs> and huge thanks to Garmin for hosting us. This was a very awesome final production trip before the pandemic kind of shut everything down for 2020. Nice. Until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. That was low, that was low. Your buddy David convinced you to go 400 and something. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Okay, so that was pretty respectable, though. That, that, that was further than usual.